of the 1888 message and introduction by Robert J. Whelan. It says, in the 1888 message and introduction, the author brings into focus Seventh-day Adventist history and sets forth spiritual insights that disclose the reason for the existence of this church. True-hearted Christians, true-hearted church members are asking with increasing persistence, why has time and sin continued so long? When the Gospel Commission should have been completed by now? What has hindered finishing the cleansing of the sanctuary? How much longer will the church talk about the latter rain before the blessing actually comes? Does God really call us the standard call us to, to the standard of character perfection while we still have a sinful nature? Is it possible for a corporate community of God's people to prepare for the second coming of Christ? The author has thought out the evidence that the Lord sent Seventh-day Adventists a message in 1888 that was precious above all earthly values, a message to prepare his sons and daughters for victory in the final conflict between good and evil. And then, for translation, the beauty, simplicity, and truth of the message that is to lighten the the world are made clear. The reader will find good news, glad tidings, and the hope and encouragement that will enable the final generation to be saints who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 13, 12. The book also sets forth the supreme business of Christ being a savior. His grace teaches mortals how to say no to the pressures of temptation both from within and from without. The author demonstrates that the message of 1888 is not merely a doctrine, but a living, vital experience based on doctrine with relevance in today's world. This book springs from many years of study going back to the late 1930s. Subsequently, the study was crystallized and in a unique way became the basis of a provocative manuscript prepared in 1950. Now, after these many years, the author's appeal remains the same, and the mystery, the haze, and in many cases the total ignorance about the epic 1888 General Conference are cleared away. The entire church may have the blessings wrapped within the message. This work is documented for the careful scholars, yet will fascinate lay members. Although many are confused about it, Seventh-day Adventists have a distinct contribution to make to the world, a reason for existence that precludes there being just another church among many others. With all the Lord has said through his messengers regarding the great blessing to be found in the 1888 message, it is certain that the church as a whole, in all its departments and among all its personnel, its ministries, and its laity, greatly needs the spiritual truth set forth in this book. To understand this and our history and its bearing on the final atonement is the sense, it's the sense, the true meaning of God's call to Laodicea to repent. May the Lord use the message found herein to bring focus to the spiritual perception. May the Lord use this message found herein to bring into focus the spiritual perception required. May the beginning of the latter rain and the loud cry of 1888 be no longer bottled up, but come to fruition. Then the church will recognize the divine plan and unitedly will give to the world the light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory. Okay. Amen. So, now, for chapter two, it's 
caption, there must be a reason. Why mm-hmm. the long delay in Christ coming? Mm-hmm. Why the long delay in Christ coming? That's the question for tonight. What has gone wrong? Asked the devout Orthodox Jew in his anguish and bewilderment at the wailing world. Even today, as he pours over the ancient predictions, The Lord made Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is perplexed. When will the God of our fathers awake and fulfill his long-delayed promise to send our Messiah to Israel? When will he make Jerusalem the joy of the whole earth? Or have our grand hopes been only in vain? Those Jews fortunate enough to get close to their one remaining holy place in Jerusalem gather at their ancient wailing wall at the southwest corner of the old temple site. There they pour out their complaints and entreaties to the God of their ancient patriarchs. I would like to tap them on the shoulder and say, friends, I have good news for you. You may stop your wailing. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have not been asleep, nor is he on care. He has kept his promise, and he did faithfully send the true Messiah in Jesus of Nazareth. The problem is that your ancestors failed to recognize, recognize him when he came, and they crucified him. I would also add, now please repent and accept him, and enjoy all the blessings he brought for you. Does anyone want to comment, or should I continue? Thank you. All right. Do devout Seventh-day Adventists, Christ- Ad- do devout Seventh-day Adventists also have their own wailing wall? <laughs> Ponder the never-ending stream of appeals and calls the prayer that come in the annual week of prayer readings, the camp meeting sermons, the general conference sessions, and annual councils calling on faithful Seventh-day Adventists to pray that the Lord will keep his promise, that he will open the windows of heaven to pour upon his people the refreshing showers of the latter rain. He, ever since Ellen White described what she saw in her May 14, 1851 vision concerning the refreshing of the latter rain, we have cherished the hope that some glorious day the God of our pioneers would grant the blessing which would bring the world task of witnessing to a triumphant close. The latter rain would consist, they understood, of an ultimate gift of the Holy Spirit to ripen the gospel grain for the harvest, even as the second Palestinian rains fulfilled the farmer's dreams. The early rain fell in the autumn and the latter in the spring. So there is a latter rain of the Holy Spirit at the opposite end of the Christian era from Pentecost. It will lead into the loud cry of the third angel's message, the final glorious enlightening of the world. All will hear the message and will take either the seal of God or the mark of the beast. And then, according to Ellen White and the founders of this church, the Lord will come in power and great glory. Then to end page 24, we have two paragraphs. Why haven't these pleading petitions of over a century been answered? Every round of appointed convocation leaves the same nagging frustration of no lottery. Why does a spiritual paralysis of lukewarmness permeate the world church? These are the questions that thoughtful 
people can't help but ask, especially you. Why consecrate yourself to a life of sacrificial toil if the second coming hopes that nourish the pioneers seem so remote to us now? Many of our youth are losing interest in the second coming of Christ. It fades further into the shadows of uncertainty. Now we're digging in for the 21st century, adding buildings to buildings, feathering feathering our nests for what looks like a long future. Like the devout Jews wailing for the coming of their Messiah, many hope against them hope that the forefathers weren't really mistaken after all. We were told in 1850, that time is almost finished. In truth, the honor of the God of the pioneers is involved. Is he faithful? Is, is he even alive? That's the end of page 23 and 24. Mm-hmm. Thing Brother Don, uh, Kim, Kim, Stephanie, you yeah. have... Uh, uh-huh. I was... Uh, so I are you hearing me? Are you guys hearing me? Yes. 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 Okay. Good night to all. Um Good night. I you want me to you would like a, a commentary on, on, on the twenty three and the twenty four because I think that's the the two that you sent me. Yep. Okay. All right. I um I just want to make sure you guys hear me because my phone is giving trouble, but I, what I see here, the, uh-huh. it's called the, why the long delay, right? And uh-huh. and that's what we're you know, drawing attention to. Um, an affectionate father, you know, this is something that it brought to mind. But an affectionate uh-huh. father spoke to his five-year-old, his five-year-old boy. Uh-huh. And said mm-hmm. to him, stay right here, buddy. And daddy's going to go up to the canyon a little further, and but I'll come back uh, for mm-hmm. you very soon. Mm-hmm. But among the rocks ahead, tragedy overtook him. And although Bobby waited for a long time, daddy did not return. Mm-hmm. And and I, I, I uh, brought up that story, that little story, because... You know, when we make human promises and pledges, even in good faith, it, it, you know, oftentimes we fail. You know, things don't work out just the way we had planned. But in Second Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 9, mm-hmm. it says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, right? Amen. And um, in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 37, it says concerning the promise of our Lord's return to this earth, we, we read this, that for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Amen. Um, yeah, amen. Amen. We are not God, and his promises are sure, but mm-hmm. we are not long-suffering. Like, the Lord is long-suffering. And if if we were like him, we would have more patience or would not get bored with the fact that he has not come and, and go about our, our, our way and doing what we want. But he has been long-suffering, and no one could be more uh, ready to come um, and to have him, you know, to come and organize this world as he intended it to be than he. And um, so in, in this page 23 and 24, what I notice is that there's a comparison between the Israelites of old mm-hmm. and and the present-day Protestant Laodicean church of, of this last day. And... and um, I, I didn't really know all what was involved in wailing at the wall, but what I looked up and found 
is that there are three things going on at the wailing of the world by the Jews. Um, one is that that's their style of praying. That's their style. That's number one. Number two, they are also said to be wailing the destruction of the temple. Something I didn't know. Mm. That, 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 that that's part of what goes on. And also, as you already stated in your reading, the arrival of the Messiah. But, of course, we know that many of them, if not 99.9% .9 of them, uh, do not acknowledge his already, you know, his arrival already on earth, but they're expecting mm -hmm. him. So when you apply these to us in terms of what the, 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 the passage said, their, their style of praying, well, is a, you know, what we have there where, where it says, um, you know, that, uh, at Seven Day Adventist, we have those um, those events like um, um, what do you call it? The what do you call it? The meetings. The let me look back at my let me look back at what we were reading. Oh, you're here. talking about where we call for prayers. We, where we where we have those the 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 what do you call it? Um, hold on, I'm getting yeah, meeting. Meeting. The camp meetings and the week of prayer reading and the uh, uh, general conference mm -hmm. sessions and the annual uh, council. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would I would I would compare that to our style of doing things. What we are mm -hmm. doing generally, you know, when we get together for these type of things, it is it is with with uh, keeping in mind that the seven day Adventists are, are waiting and looking forward to um, the return of Jesus Christ. And and mm -hmm. it also is surrounding our evangelism to make others aware that Jesus is coming soon, and mm -hmm. um, and I, I, you know that's usually the crux of our meeting and doing these things. So that's our style and that's our reasoning. Um, mm. And so I guess that's what because initially I didn't understand why would they want to compare our sessions to the wailing uh, at the wall. But I understand that our style is not like their style, and it is a style for them to go and wail at the wall. Um, and, and they are um, awaiting the arrival of the Messiah, but we are re awaiting the second arrival of, of, of you know, of, of Jesus Christ, of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you know, it's comparable. Um, but that lack of faith that or the the fact that time means nothing to our lord and our, and on our god and when i say it means nothing i mean time is not quite the same as what how we experience it as opposed to how he experiences it and um and so when he says soon um of course he did state all what we are to look forward to or what we are to expect to see uh, as time closes. Uh, but the lack of our long suffering, and, and I think he'll be developing that in us, is, is why we would keep asking why and, um, you know, why the long delay. And it's hard to imagine in this world with the, the, the cruelty and the evil that's that's going on rampantly that he would want to wait any longer but it's it's not only in his mercy towards the world it's his mercy towards us because he wants us to be uh, involved in the work of getting our brothers and sisters ourselves and our brothers and sisters ready um, mm -hmm. and we could he could just you know, cut that off. He, we could not hate, I shouldn't say we could not, we do not hate, we do not have the same level of hate for the same thing as he does. And he mm -hmm. does, we do not have the same level of mercy as he does either. And while that is not going to stop what he plans to do, um, mm -hmm. it, 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 it shows me for myself as well as what I see going on in the church 
and um, in the world that when it comes to long suffering, when it comes to um, um, wanting to give all his children a chance, and and when it comes to timing, we are not on the same page with him because he's he's you know obviously waited this long, and I understand. Uh, in past times when I've listened to um, this group and many other groups that I've been on line with that, you know, when he he could have come a long time ago and mm-hmm. um, would have had we been doing what we were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I think of that, I say, well, then that would mean that I would even be here. I wouldn't even exist. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and, and it's, a, it's a strange thing. <laughs> It, it makes you say, okay, yeah, maybe it would have been better that I didn't exist in that way because this, you know, this world has gone really, you know, has, you know, gone far in the, in the, in the way of sin. And at the same time, you say to yourself, well, what a wonderful privilege it is to be able to work along with our Father in heaven and all the hosts of heaven in bringing, you know, um, in bringing in the sheaves or bringing, you know, or helping with the harvest or, you know, working in the vineyard to help others who are here to to know him and not to be deceived anymore and to to uh, gain um, eternal life with a loving God. So it's 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 almost bittersweet, like you know, like uh, like the book that the the you know the apostle um, swallowed. You know, uh, no, was it Daniel that the, you know that book? put in, in his mouth was mm-hmm. was sweet and when it went in his stomach was bitter. I, I say mm-hmm. bittersweet because it's yeah, he should have come a long time ago. And at the same time, yeah, I'm glad that I'm here to have some part of of his um of his work. And Amen. his kingdom. Amen. Some some good, like something I never thought of, but some good. Mm-hmm. Um, can I make a statement? Um, mm-hmm. Also, I mean, this beautiful quotation that we read, we are ready before in a great controversy page um, 343.1. I'll just read it quickly. It says that uh, the work of God in the earth presents from age to age a striking similarity in every great reformation or religious movement. The principles of God dealing with men are ever the same. The important movements of the present have the parallel in those of the past, and the experience of the church in former ages has lessons of great value for our own time. So, Mm -hmm. the the world is wondering why there is so much of a delay, or the church is wondering why there is a delay, Mm -hmm. realizing that um, Adventists are in the the same spiritual condition as the Jews. And um, like on the borders of Canaan, like on the borders of Canaan, the when the message was for to go forth to enter the, the, the land of Canaan, and um, only two men stood, right? Only two mm-hmm. of those that were sent were ready. That was Joshua and Caleb. Mm-hmm. So we see that same parallel with uh, Adventists in 1888. God sent his messengers, two men also, right? So mm-hmm. we see a parallel in that. And also we see uh, of the delay, we see when Moses went up into the mountain to to get the, the commandments, right? Written on, on two stones. And the Israelites were like, you know, where is this Moses? He's taking too long. So mm. let us make make us a God, you know, so we can worship. Mm-hmm. And what they do, they fell into idol worship. So mm-hmm. this is the same thing that the world will repeat. And it's like Jesus Christ is taking too long. So now what are they going to do? They're going to form an image to the beast and bow down and worship it. Is it? Mm-hmm. So then now God's people are going to stand separate from them. So the same principles that we're dealing with, same principles. Mm-hmm. So, study the life of the the Israelites. Study study especially the Old Testament. Study it a lot, and you will see you will see so much, you know, so much parallelism, so much of everything that they went through. 
that God's people have in these last days, they have to go through the same thing. And when everything is said and done, a remnant, a remnant will be left standing. A remnant mm. out of what is there right now. Mm. Mm. That is okay. Well, I oh, sorry again. Go ahead. Go ahead, sister. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um. Sorry, Randy. Um. <clears throat> two things. One, can someone correct me? I I'm there wondering when I said uh, sweet in the mouth and bitter in the stomach. Who was it again? Please make sure I I said that correctly. Um. Help me. Somebody. <laughs> That was that was Brother John in Revelation chapter ten. Okay. Again. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they have to prophesy again. Right, right, right. I, I am yeah, I am I correct. Right. Hmm? Thank you. Um what I wanted to I wanted to read something else. Is that okay? Just to add to yeah. what I said? Sure. Is that fine? Okay, sure. it, you know, yeah. Okay, I. What would what would be the attitude of the people towards towards truth? The attitude in these days, and and um, mm-hmm. what I was reading is that that, you know, and this is why it's take. This is why I think I this I think this contributes to the length of time, um, but it says here ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Um, I'm reading from a book, and it says, Now as Jonas and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men mm-hmm. of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. That's um, also from um, coming from Second Timothy uh, verse, chapter 3, um, 7 and 8. And... Um, mm-hmm. Another uh, verse from Second Timothy chapter 4 is saying, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned in, unto fables. Um, hmm. So if, if half of the workforce are not, do not have their boots on the ground, but they're busy um, listening to things that are not true and resisting truth, then mm. the work would not go as speedily as it can. And when you have a small workforce that is overworking themselves and mm. dying off, um, mm. as has been in the past, um, and not dying because, not dying because of, um, you know, you know, not eating well or or doing as they should, but because they're overworked, um, mm-hmm. then then you have and you you have things that are not going as it should. Not as many boots on the ground, and not strong boots on the ground. And um, mm-hmm. and but you know, we know that according to what Randy just said, we know that God is able and that He will um, strengthen. I sort of lost the thought. But he he will strengthen this last small group. He will give them the strength, the speed. All those who are jumping out and those who are coming in in their place um, will have to learn everything, and God will bring them up to speed. He will take them from kindergarten to uh, um, university level, so to speak, uh, in his word and in his way um, because... Mm -hmm you know, it will be it will be needed and he will get the work done uh regardless. But, you know, I guess what I'm looking at is resisting the truth and not doing the work is mm. why there's such a delay. Okay. Okay. Resisting the truth and not doing the work. All right. Great. Um, yeah. Those are your comments, right? <clears throat> yeah, okay. that's new comment on 23 and 24. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. Before, Sister Andrea, are you commenting on 23 and 24? Well, I'm, commit- I'm commenting on the topic 
Why the long delay? Okay, before you go, I would ask Brother Don. He also okay. had to comment in 23 and 24. Uh, I like to start in, let mm -hmm. me um, see, Matthew. Matthew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chapter 6, and it's mm -hmm. verse 34, and mm -hmm. it says that, um, take therefore no thought for the, t for the morrow, for mm -hmm. the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you knows, but that's one of my, right before that, 633, one of my favorite Bible verses, seek ye first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added unto us. Amen. And so, so, and then in Christ's object lessons, it says, uh, page 69, um, when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. Mm -hmm. The character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, and then he will come to claim them as his own. Amen. And, and, and so I'll get to the fruit. At the very end, what I have to say, I want to go to Second Peter, like the sister brought up earlier. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, the way I see it is, okay, let's go to Second Peter so I can understand. So, so mm -hmm. he starts talking to Second Peter that he's writing this epistle, you know, both to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, and so, you know, repetition deepens the impression. And I know for myself, the more I learn the same thing over and over again, you know, it becomes part of us. And then God reveals different truths also in the same thing that we go over. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so Peter continues on talking about that the holy prophets and wrote, um, you know, about our Savior and stuff. And then he says, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own mm -hmm. lust, mm -hmm. and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continued as they were from the beginning. Now, we know that's not true. We know that's not true because the book has been changing. So we're always going to have scoffers at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I go back to 1888, just like to the Garden of Eden, sin did not come as a surprise to God. And so he knew that in 1888 they would reject the message. But I believe starting point, as we know, of the latter rain being poured out and as a, as a group of people, because we know that the third angel's message is righteousness by faith. And it's not just, you know, you're going to choose Saturday or Sunday. We're going to be mm -hmm. telling and revealing to people the love of God, its character. And because of that, they'll make a decision. And some people are going to be really hard, and they're not going to make that decision for God. And so, as I, and anybody can jump in anytime too, if they want to say something, no problem. But we're told also in Second Peter mm -hmm. that we can hasten, we can hasten. We're, we're supposed to be looking for and hastening mm -hmm. unto the coming of the day of the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. But yet I go back to Matthew 6, and I'm, I'm really got to be focusing on what God wants me to do today. Because mm -hmm. Jesus can't come tomorrow because the prophecies have not all been fulfilled of the end time, and we know that. And mm -hmm. what we need to do as his army is to what does he want to teach me today, which is a stepping stone to what I'm going to learn tomorrow, to where I fully surrender to God. Because at, at the end of Second Peter, he talks about um, looking for the hastening, okay. And then it says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, which is the second coming, be diligent that you may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. 
an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written to you. So these people are getting another letter that Paul is already, it's like their second witness, right, from Peter. And what he's saying is, is that, as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they also with the other well, with the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Mm-hmm. And so, and then he says, "Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before." So he's telling us, "You know this is coming. It's going to be easy to be mm-hmm. deceived if you if, if you allow it." Beware of as you also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness and, and growing with Christ. Because then that's what, he, in the last one, Second Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. And so that takes me to another favorite Bible verse, John 17.3. This is eternal life, that you know the one true God and Jesus Christ, so he sent. And so... I, the second coming is going to come on time, is how I see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and, and as men, we talk about things, and women, we talk about things, and we put mm-hmm. our own perspective on things. Because remember, also in the scripture, he talks about how a day is like a thousand years. And mm-hmm. because we want things done by the way, we think it's supposed to be done. But because mm-hmm. of our stiffness, our, our hardness of our hearts, our hard-headedness. God had to start it back in 1888 with Jones and Wagner. So when it comes here to the future, we'll, we'll all have an understanding of it because we're seeking out the Lord. Um, mm-hmm. And then it comes to the part of the fruit. We all know what Galatians 5, uh, 22, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, when the fruit is coming forth, when Christ is reproduced in his people, will be producing this fruit, then he puts in the sickle, and that's when it's going to, when it's going to happen. And, but we never read Galatians 5, 19 to 21, which talks about all of the, <laughs> the, the flesh, the, the sexual immor- uh, immorality, the impurity, idolatry, rivalry, jealousy, outburst of anger, and so what God is revealing in my life, when I have any of those things happen, you know, envy, murder, drunkenness, ball party, and I don't do any of those, but we hate our brother without a cause, mm-hmm. you know, it's murder. And so mm-hmm. whenever, I, whenever I lose, whenever I'm in, in, the, in the, the fruit of the flesh, mm-hmm. the Lord shows me right away, and I know it, and I want to get back to the, the peace and into the spirit and, and live with, with my God. And so I, I think that as right now we're probably a lot of us are blades, you know, you know, and we're not the full ear of corn yet, but we're working that way because we believe God's going to do that for us. And mm-hmm. and like I said, I don't I don't see a delay in His coming whatsoever. Uh, like I said, mm-hmm. He 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 sees the future. He knows when the people will be ready, and He's already prophesied about it. And so. It's our job to hasten that company, and that is to just give up on this ridiculous stuff that we hang on to. I mean, it's it's just incredible because it's been a rough week for me dealing with stuff in my life. There's that junk that it's like I don't know how it has any value, you know. But it's <laughs> it, it well, it comes to the point of realizing that Jesus is my friend, you know. Mm-hmm. And it is a real relationship with him and the Father, and it's all like, why do you don't like any of that stuff? Why do I do this stuff against you? Why do I mm-hmm. allow situations, things going on in this world, to act unlike you and to do things that are wrong? And it, and and he's right there to tell me why, <laughs> you know, and, and he's really kind about it. And then it's like, sorry, Lord, I, I, want, I want to strive and I want to keep going that way, and so. No matter what we're hit with, I just want to encourage everybody just to keep going to God. Ask for forgiveness. He's, he, like, like you said earlier, you know, why do we do these things? <laughs> you know, and it's like mm-hmm. because we, I guess the repetition isn't deep enough, you know, to where we've made new mm-hmm. pathways in our brain. 
to where all we think about is God and, and how we can please him and how we can do his work. Because, you know, we're all part of the body. I don't know which part, if I'm an elbow or I'm an ankle or a knee or what I am, but I have a different job as other people, you know, to mm-hmm. keep the body going. And and so I think it's – I'm getting ready to go on a – some fasting time here and prayer time of what does God really want me to do with my life? Because that's my biggest concern in my life. Which direction do I go? And uh, he, he'll, he'll lead me. He leads me every day. <laughs> I mean, it's like amazing. You ask, and he takes care of you because he knows who we are. We, and he knows we're just like our children were, you know. They want to do what's right. They want to learn, but they just don't know. And as we guide them along, you know, God is such an – a way more gentle guider, <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's a proper way to say it, but he's so kind and so loving and wonderful that I just, I, you know, I, and it makes my heart want to, like, you know, follow him and obey him because he has the best intent for me and for all of us. So, you know, that's how I got, that's how it came across to me. And I think it's more of a man-made thing talking about the, um, I mean, I know there's scripture in there and, and there's definitely scripture telling us, He's going to come. But I think it's just another one of those things we get caught up in. Because, I mean, I've met a lot of Adventists in my life who tell me, oh, I've heard about Jesus coming for 20, 30, 40 years. He ain't here yet. And it's all like, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like the world's so different now. It's so right for the coming. All this hatred on this planet. All the the terrible things we're talking about, just the 5G and how that's just going to mess with people's minds and bodies and make people more sick and we don't even talk about the cloning. They're keeping that quiet, all that stuff that's still going on, you know, mm-hmm. the amalgamation of the time of Noah. So we know we're closer than we've ever been before, but I, I believe our focus is more on having that really tight relationship with the Father and the Son. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Mm. All right. Thank you, Brother Don. Thank you, Sister Steph. So you... Uh, Mm-hmm. Okay, you did a comment uh, page by page, or we can just comment? Yeah, you can just make... Uh, no, certain people had had the opportunity to study the page and just give a summary, but anybody else mm-hmm. can comment. Mm-hmm. Well, Andrew was going to say something. Yeah. Well, Andrew, you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so um, we're talking about why the long delay of Christ's second coming. Second mm-hmm. Peter 3, verses 8 and 9 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as mm-hmm. some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Amen. Now, great controversy for the eight point. <laughs> Amen. Great controversy, um, page forty eight point one says, he does not forget or neglect his children. But he permits the wicked to reveal their true character. The one who desire to do his will may be deceived concerning them. Again, the righteous are placed in the furnace of affliction that they themselves may be purified, that their example may con since others of the reality of faith and godliness, and also that their consistent course may condemn the ungodly and unbelieving. God permits the wicked to prosper and to reveal their enmity against him, that when they shall have filled up the measure of their iniquity, all may see his justice and mercy in their utter destruction. The day of his vengeance hasten when all who have transgressed his law 
and oppress his people will meet the just recompense of their deeds. When every Mm -hmm. act of cruelty or injustice towards God's faithful ones will be punished as though done to Christ himself. There Mm -hmm. is another and more important question that should engage the attention of the churches of today. The Apostle Paul declares that all that declares that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why is it then that persecution seems opposition? The religion which is current in our day is not of the pure holy character that marked the Christian faith in the days of Christ and his apostles. It is only because of the spirit of compromise with sin because the great truths of the word of God are so indifferently regarded, because there is so little vital godliness in the church that Christianity is apparently so popular with the world. Let mm-hmm. there be a re- let there be a revival of the faith and power of the early church, and the spirit of persecution will be revived. And the fires of persecution will be kindled. But um, that is taken from Great Controversy 48, Paragraph 1. So um, the, 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 the question is asked, why the long delay? And the, the answer is clear is that God is permitting what is happening here now with the wicked for them to fill the cup. They have to fill their cup so that the whole world can see. It's the same thing with Satan. Um, the question could be asked, why God did not kill Satan? Why he didn't kill Lucifer? Um, God had to permit this to happen. So that all the world, not, not just the, 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 the earth here that is sinned, but all the world, the whole universe can see what sin is doing and has done to us to Christ, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. that sin will never again raise its ugly head. So we Mm -hmm. are wondering why the delay, why God hasn't come yet. But again, he says here with Peter that a thousand years is like a day to God. So Sister Stephanie has said um, God doesn't matter about time because time is different for God. As it clearly Mm -hmm. points out that a thousand years is like a day. So we cannot compare time. We, we, we cannot fathom the understanding of time with God. As Isaiah says, who can, by searching, find out God? So we cannot understand. So we don't want to place our, our mindset and say, okay, we're going to try to understand what time is. Let us hold fast to that which we have and let no man take our crown. Amen. 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 <laughs> you see, lately, it was uh, maybe a month or two months ago, I was listening to a video, and the president of General Conference mentioned the fourth angel message. Mm-hmm. And he just mentioned fourth angel and he just moved quick. Like he doesn't talk about it. I mean, fourth angel and continue. And I was like, so, the leadership knows this. And I'm asking myself, how many pastor members are we going to ask right now? What is the fourth angel message and how they are, what they are going to say? Then I would like us to to pay attention to something. All you guys saying is very true, that the cup of iniquity needs to be full, uh, that God people also need to be um, ready. Everything is like um, it must happen at the same time because God cannot allow the Sunday law if he don't have people who can go through it. 
It's not possible. Hmm. God will not. You can see even the work of uh, Satan against Job. God has to work with Job first. Until Job become ready to be able to go through all of that. And if you look at very well, the only purpose Job is suffering for is not because he has something. Job already has been proved and declared perfect by God. So Job's suffering is to condemn Satan. Mm-hmm. But for that to happen, God needs to work with Job first. Now, question here. If Job was not ready, could God allow Satan to tempt him? Mm-mm. No, never. He's attempting with us today. Now, God wants Satan, demon, papacy, all the world, the whole world, to do their own wickedness, to persecute people who are really obeying. By doing that, they will condemn themselves that we have decided to persecute those who choose to obey God. And God will, uh, that will be their own condemnation. So for God to have everything he needed for the, what we call the executive judgment, he needs all of this to come together. A perfect people like Christ who can go through persecution without sinning and much more who can even stand in that time without dying and going through everything, and then without Medeiro, so that will become the prime of the, of the revelation of divine character of love. God is going to share the fullness of his own nature with the 144,000 between the time probation is closed to the time Christ appears on earth. So all of this is going to serve as a testimony of the revelation of the faith of Jesus manifest in a complete obedience unto death in the life of the 144,000. So we did all of it. Tonight, yes, 1888 is righteous by faith. Amen. Now, let's pay attention here clearly, uh, carefully. Look at the Jew on the day of Pentecost. If I ask right now what they were doing, I'm not talking about the disciple in the upper room, the regular Jew. On that day, what they were doing? They were also keeping the Pentecost. They were also keeping the Pentecost there. They were keeping the, what can I call, in French we call it revolution, like what God bypassed. God said, okay, this is done away, we move to this level. Hmm. So they were keeping their pentacles, but now from that point, according to their own will, because when Christ died on the cross, the veil rent from the top to the bottom. So God is telling them clearly, this century that I myself has initiated with you, it is done over. We turn the page to the new one. They don't want the new one. They prefer to continue the old one because they already set into it so much that it does not even disturb anything. It makes them proud. It makes them satisfied. They are the only one who have God as their own, as their own property. I don't know. And when the dear Pentecost come, they were keeping the very same, same thing they have to do. But on the very same day, the disciples were in an upper room doing the new form of the Pentecost and preparing their heart and everything, and they received that lot of rain. You see, the, the, uh, that, that was a, a formal rain for them. Now, what I'm trying to show here is that we can have the same doctrine with a different meaning, different understanding, and they will produce different faith and action. 
If you go to Catholic right now, they're going to tell you they are saved by grace. You go to Protestant, they are saved by grace. And everyone understands what it means by grace. Protestant, uh, Catholic will say, by grace I go to Mary, Mary go to Jesus, Jesus go to his Father. Protestant, I go to Christ, and then Christ begs the Father, and I'm saved. Regular Adventist, yes, Christ, and the most holy place, do a sermon for me, and then boom, I'm saved. Now, 1888 is saying, not just Christ and his kids for you, but his very life by a mysterious way how to be reproduced in you. So you have the same title of doctrine, the same Bible verse used, but people have a different meaning and different understanding with a different corresponding act of obedience and experience. And this is what's going on right now. So my suggestion for us tonight is, I would suggest that we pay a close attention until we get exactly what God wants us to get. Not just the idea of 1888, not just the idea of righteousness by faith, but exactly that advanced level he wants us to get. Because when the disciple understood the, the new understanding of the Pentecost, it forced them to be prepared. It forced them to be in a real prayer, in pouring their soul before God, in a contrition. They used to argue and fight. They stopped all of that. It's like it changed everything. Now, the regular Jews keeping the same Pentecost, but they still have the same hatred in their heart, the same family issue, the same trouble, but they're keeping the same day. Guess what? They come up with the different meaning and different experience and different results. So I am really struggling to, 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 to find a right word that I think or I give some understanding here, that we can be using the same word, same verse, and still have different meaning. And that is extremely dangerous. So I really, really suggest that we, we, we dig out, dig out to see what is exactly what I need to get right here. Okay. But if I'm not clear, now somebody can re-explain what, I try, what I'm trying to say, though. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. And I was actually going to say the same thing, that almost all three or all four of you are saying the same, actually have the same theme in that um, Sister... sister Stephanie was saying that, you know, God's long suffering and our long suffering is different. Um and Sister Brother Don was saying that, you know, his main focus is what God wants to do with him and him mm-hmm. in him and through him and so so have him become prepared that he can prepare others. Uh, Sister Andrine also was saying, you know, that God's timing is is set and he is not late. So um, we just have to hold hold fast to the faith um, in Christ. And then you also are saying the same thing that, um, well, putting it all together in that, you know, we need to pay a close attention in that we might all be saying the same things, but it actually comes down to um, our level at the end of the day. Just as the Jews were having the same Pentecost, but they they had a different understanding, so it ended up with a different result for them. Likewise, we might all be saying the same thing or um, having the same theme, but we might have a totally different understanding in our head, which can lead us to two different places. Um, so I think it's, it's very important what you said that we really, um, well, when you said what you said just now, it, it just made me think that 
this thing has just come down to your level at the end of the day. Like it's on More a personal, personal level. Exactly. Yes, but the, my, my, the thing, it, it comes to the personal level, that's 100% true. But what do I understand personally? You see, let, let's take the example of myself. Mm-hmm. Even when I graduate from school preaching, I preach that God, if you do this, God will curse you, and I, God will do this to you, like, unwillingly, that how I see in the Bible, that when God get mad, <clears throat> he will just mess you up. Like, that's what we have learned. That is the image of God I had, so I obey God from fear. Mm-hmm. If you ask me to preach a message to show who is God, that's how I'm going to describe it. <laughs> that, that preaching of God to people is exactly how Satan preached. That was exactly what the papers is preaching. Like, if you say the three angels message, for example, we say fear God, and if you don't, the judgment is, uh, is uh, the hour of his judgment is coming, and you are going to drink his wrath without any mixture. Catholic people put it in another way, you are going to burn in hell forever. Now, we use this thing with baptize people with it. We scare people that how judgment is going to fall, it's going to be so bad. So we lead people to be afraid of God. And the day they are free from that, they will leave the church or they stay in the church but don't have Christian life. Now, when I start understanding, the, oh, 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 I get the whole opposite of the message. That if the whole thing is about Christ came here to reveal who is God. Even the disciples start to understand the Bible in a complete opposite way, like so God did not destroy the world with the flood. God saved eight people with the flood. So it's a two different God. If you look at Paul, for example, because of the image Paul had in, in his mind of God, he went and was persecuting the people of God in the name of God. But in reality, it was the Spirit of God working with him? No. Satan was using him because of his misunderstanding. But in an honest heart, Paul was working for God. And this is what happens to many of us today. We are honest in our hearts, and we are preaching exactly. So what's the solution? What? Huh? So what's the solution for that? I didn't hear you, please. So what's the solution for that? The solution, the solution is looking for the accurate message Christ came to give about righteousness by faith. Because his life itself was the message. His preaching was the explanation of the message. Maybe I need to repeat that. His life of selflessness, of self-denial, 100% depend on the Father every single minute. That was the message Christ brought to us. Then, his preaching, like the beatitude, everything he was preaching was the explanation of that life. So, what is that? It's, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so it still boils down to a mm-hmm. personal relationship with God because mm-hmm. the person or the members, they cannot. Um, you you can preach and you can tell them, you can show them the character of God, but if they don't search for God, if they don't earn for it, if they don't will for it, no matter how much you preach, it won't happen. It's their personal relationship. It's their 
fight, is their struggle for them to have it with God. When Jacob struggled with God, the other, his other, his wives and his children were not struggling. It was only Jacob who received that blessing because he wanted something, he looked for something, and he struggled for it, and he received it. So in the congregation of the church, no matter how much you preach and teach, if you do not go out as a personal, as, as, as your own person and struggle and fight and ask God for this relationship with him, it, they cannot receive it. So you can yeah, understand yeah, intellectually the character of God, but if you do not go for it personally, you will not receive it. Yes, so you're I saying, see. you're saying the 188 message, but, but at the end of the day, it's still a personal relationship with God. Maybe, maybe I don't explain myself. Let me try it again. I don't say it is not a personal relationship. Let's put it this way. Can Jacob by himself knew or pray asking Christ to bless him? Can Jacob of himself knew, mm-hmm. knew to ask and God? Asked, like, can he by himself knew and ask for the blessing? No, the Holy Spirit has to be working with him. Christ needs to tell him what he needs. Right. In another way. Well, the Holy, the Holy Spirit has to be working with him. For, but at some point, he has to be having some type of struggle for the Holy Spirit to work with him. Because if you don't, the Bible clearly says, ask for the Holy Spirit and he will receive it. If you are not asking for it, how can you receive it? So at some point, he had to have, his conscience had to have put him into a position where he was struggling for it. And God showed him, no, this is what you need to do. But we, it's still a personal relationship. It's not, it's not going to be a congregational thing. I don't deny that. I'm just trying. Okay, let me put it another way. Look at the disciple. Can the disciple by themselves knew that that day they should be in a place in prayer, in contrition, and all of that. They should knew, they can know that by themselves? No. No, they, they learn, 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 learn from so, Christ. Before you move to a personal relationship, it's a message that leads you to that personal relationship. You see, Paul, Paul was very honest. He was real. He had a personal zeal for God. He had a personal relationship with God, but it was based on a wrong message. So before we move to the personal relationship, what are we bringing in that personal relationship? You see, Job, Jacob, he went to pray because of his personal relationship he had with God. When it get very hot, he goes to God. But guess what? He went there based on what he know. Question, how long Jacob can pray the way he went to pray that God could change the situation? He can pray whole life. He won't change anything. Until he will listen to the revelation. Say, listen, the problem is not your brother, it's to you. You need to be delivered from yourself. Then the whole thing changed. Same thing for the disciples. Christ needs to tell them that things have been changed. It's going to go this way. So that's what happened to Adventist Church in 1888. God is telling them, yeah, you have the three angel message. But from now, it moved to this level of experience. It's a personal experience, personal relationship. But it's a message that brings you to have a deeper, a, a whole new level of that personal relationship. So I 100% agree it must be a personal relationship. But there is something that brings you to that a kind 
of a personal relationship. So, that's then, the 1838 message would bring mm-hmm. us to that personal relationship, but you're saying that we need something more. I, I don't think we need anything more. I'm saying maybe I need a better word right here. You're, you are just saying that we can have the 1888 message, but we can have, we can be saying the same thing but we can have different meaning, different understanding, and different results. So then having the 1888 message is not all. Is that what you're saying, or I'm, I'm getting wrong? Yeah. No, that's, that's, not what I'm try- that's not what I'm trying to say. I am trying to say our personal relationship depends on what we know and understand. So if what we know and understand is wrong, the relationship is going to be wrong. Okay. Pastor, Pastor. I have a question. This is Julian. I agree with you. <laughs> May I ask a question? I'm sorry. Yes. Sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm new on the line, oh. and I'm. This is the second um, Sabbath that I've actually been listening to these messages. What I'm uh-huh. hearing, and I don't understand. The 18, I'm mm-hmm. trying to understand the 1888 message. It seems as though it's saying the 1888 message sort of like changes a paradigm. It changes a model. It changes a yeah. way that we think about Christ. And so if we change the way that we think about Christ, then the sister said that there's a struggle. The struggle then, it seems like the struggle then becomes personal. In the sense Mm -hmm. of, okay, well, Christ is like this. The struggle is how can I get rid of whatever it is in my character so I can be like Christ because I now see him this way. I don't see him differently. Mm -hmm. Good. And so the the beauty Mm -hmm. of the, I'm just, I'm I'm just here. I'm, I don't understand it, but this is what oh, I'm you're hearing. It. You're getting it. You're getting it. It sounds like you do. And so <laughs> instead of looking at Christ as mm-hmm. someone who has to be feared, it's like mm-hmm. what pastor has been preaching for since I've been on this line for a couple of weeks now. Why do we have to fight? Why do we defend ourselves? Why do we raise our voices? Did Christ do that? Nope. No. He didn't. Nope. Yep. Christ is dead. Christ is dead. But he's not functioning as much as we allow him. So, Pastor. Mm-hmm. We're going back. We're going back to to um originally the personal relationship with God. You you mm-hmm. you you said we can hear the message and everybody have different interpretation and some interpretation could be wrong and what have you. What I'm trying to say, because mm-hmm. the the sister just brought it out and that's exactly what I've been saying, but you're saying no. What I I'm saying no, I don't say no. Please try to understand me. What I'm saying I'm not saying no. I agree with you um okay, but, then, but, but, but mm-hmm. then when you when you go to go go to um um further hit it's it 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 is changed so then i'm 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 going back and I'm thinking okay um I'm not getting it so i this 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 is where I'm going to go back to the bible say mm-hmm. spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Mm-hmm. You said that for Jacob, God told him what to do. The same thing will happen in the last. Every person who who really wants God and who mm-hmm. search for God with all their heart, they will find God. Yes, no matter how much they they get the message wrong, if you truly are looking. For God, He will show up. He will be found. So, so um, if I if 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 I hear the message and I probably get it a little bit wrong or whatever, but if I go down on my knee and I 
I ask God every day, please show me, please show me, uh -huh. teach me, was, show me what exactly. to do. He is exactly. going, yeah, but, 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 but it's not a congregational thing. It is a personal thing. I agree with you, sister. I agree 100%. And we are talking here about the very same thing. I am just, okay, let's put the example of Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8. Paul finally knew Christ. And he knew he had to be like Christ. Then he started trying to be like Christ. He tried to keep himself from doing bad things. He will pray and fast, and the next minute he goes do exactly what he don't want to do. He was like, what is this? Like, what is this? I'm struggling. Like, wait a minute. He's trying, he's trying. Now, in the same Romans 7, verse 23 down to 25, he was like, oh, I understand. It's two laws. One law is the law of selfishness. That is ruling in selfish mind. The other law is the law of selflessness, which is the law of the spirit in Christ. And Roman 8 now, when he received that law of life, he said, there's no more condemnation. Why? Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ free me from the law of the spirit uh, from the law of sin and death. So, in Romans 7, Paul had a personal relationship with God. He was struggling to be like Christ, but he was using the wrong formula. In Romans 8, God gave him advancing life. You see, today we are advancing, we think, if we can let the whole world know about the purpose and Sunday law, everything will be fine. They look at Revelation very well. He said, why say very well, the third angel could not finish the message. But we don't pay attention to that. There is a finishing of the mystery of God in Revelation 10, verse 7. So when all of us will want the life of Jesus, and we know we cannot make it, guess what? Because somebody, like Jacob said, Lord, I understand the message. I know it. I want it. I can't make it. And I cannot let you go. This is what's going to bring all Adventists, all of us, into the same place. Same place meaning in the same mind. Wherever you are, Europe, Caribbean, America, Africa, whatever. You say, Lord, it is time I fully give up and I will not let go until your promise to turn me away from my iniquity is done. You see the disciples did the same thing happen to them. When they finally understood what should happen, it brings unity, same movement, same behavior, same faith. It brings everything to one. Because the 144, they have the same condition. With the same work of God, everything comes to same. The day 18 is clear in all Adventists. The conference will stop firing the, 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 the present truth. The present truth will stop firing the conference. The independent will stop. All of us will stop all the fights. And we all say, Lord, we need your character. Because that is the only character we need to get into the time of, the greatest time of trouble. So what Sister uh, 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 um, Andrew is saying, you are 100% right. But I'm saying that in that personal relationship, we must open our mind to receive advancing light, deeper understanding that leads us to that deeper personal experience. It's a personal experience, yes. It needed things that lead us to that deeper personal experience. Pastor, this is unique again. So the 144,000, they well, uh, truly understand the nature and character of Christ. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yep. They okay. truly understand the point because, you see, uh, like Sister Andrew was saying before, that if you are struggling, God is going to reveal it to you. That is true. Right now, there are many 
could never hear about Sabbath. But their mind is fixed to obey God. If they hear it, just, just hear it a little bit, they're going to bite us. Mm-hmm. If they die with that mind, if they die with the mind I said, the word of God says goes. In, in principle, that person is keeping Sabbath. If you're going to see him at the resurrection. Now, me, for example, for example, see I'm speaking French now. So, me, for example, knowing the Sabbath, preaching every Sabbath. Now, if I do whatever I want Sabbath, I keep the Sabbath the way I want. I am that willing disobedience. You know whatever I want. No matter how much I preach and how many people I baptize, I am going to be lost because I am not having the what is called corresponding work of the faith. So 1888, maybe let me put it in this way for us to see a little bit how it looks like. This we will talk a little bit about some of the things about the life of Jesus. When I read these ages, these are ages to age 89, It might seem that we are using too much time, but I am calling the patience of everyone. It will help us that as we have the book, we will be striving by God's grace to get deeper and deeper of it. So we might not cover the whole subject. Um, let me see here. Okay. This is ages page 89, paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, paragraph 4. He says, Jesus do not contend for his right. Jesus did not contend for his right. Often his work was made unnecessarily severe because he was willing and uncomplaining. Yet, he did not fail nor become discouraged. He lived above these difficulties. You see, that? that's the life of Jesus. He lived above these difficulties. And that is the life he wants me to have. I say, as if in the light of, of God's continent. He continues saying, and he did not retaliate when roughly used, but God insult patiently. When I look at that life of Jesus, and I look at my life now, and I can see how much I, for the week I, I lose all patience for little things. I should live above all difficulties, and I can see I'm just struggling with all of them. You see, Christ did not contend for his right. We grow up educated to know that if somebody does something to you, you need to fight back. You need to defend yourself. You need to prove yourself right. We have that mind. Now, if somebody believes that he has to defend himself, that is his belief, how God can help somebody like that, that he will not fight? Remember, God is working with the mind. So when we start looking at the life of Jesus himself now, that's where human beings can see that, okay, I get it. I can get this thing done. I need to surrender fully. So it brings a Christian to the point where every day you feel the need of God. You feel the help of God. Then I go to Second First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 to 22. How Christ says insult and all of these things, Without retaliating, retaliating if he have my nature. Oh, when somebody threaten him, he threaten not. Somebody do anything to him, what he did, he commit himself to the Father. So I understand now that if I start having any trouble with my sister or start having any problem with any brother, if the person starts saying things to me, the first thing I should do, which is called selflessness or the mind of Christ, 
is commit myself to God in prayer. But if I did not pray at that minute, guess what? My self is going to react. And that is the law of sin and death. So it brings me to the, a, a level of a personal relationship with God that is so serious. It's so burning. When Stephen understood this thing, it was so precious to him that even the pain of the stone could not distract him from depending on God. How am I easily distracted every day? Let it thing happen. Oh, I even forget Christ. I fight, I argue, and after that, the Spirit rebukes me. I say, oh, Lord, I need help. I, I, I need help so much. That means I have to go to the point where it becomes the law I live by. The law of in everything I have to commit to the Father. Then, Judah 24, as much as I commit myself to him, he will go in to keep me. So when I read the story of John Hoss, it's a point that they didn't have this advancing life. But they have what? They had the same experience. He was singing and praising God when the fire was burning him slowly until he was silent. The same thing happened to Jerome. Singing to God, praising God and the fire. The Catholic people put this fire and burning the man to death. It's the same spirit that Stephen had. It's the same experience we must have in the last days. So I agree with you, Sister uh, uh, Andrew, very well that some of us not understand every mean of breaking down piece by piece, but that deep desire to please God is there. That is the message. Amen. Now, more than this, we are called to teach other people the same message. You see, Christ lived the message, but at the same time, he taught the message. That means the necessity to understand it and explain it is also important. So I do not disagree with you, but I'm just trying to say that there's also a necessity of understanding. Because remember, we are going to receive the latter rain, not just in the perfect way. We receive the power to teach a message. While we are having the experience, we have also to teach the message. Like the disciples, they receive the power of the Holy Spirit. They have the experience, and they have also to do what? Preach a clear message. And you will see Revelation 12, verse 11, that we are going to overcome only by the blood of Jesus and the testimony. What is the blood of Jesus? The life of Jesus. What is the testimony? The testimony is how much we're going to face tribulation without sinning. How are we going to face this tribulation and loving our enemy the very same way Christ did? So when there was a stone in Stephen, there was a life of Jesus in Stephen. But guess what? His prayer and love for his enemy is a testimony. It testifies. Even more than that, the very word that Christ come out of the mouth of Christ was proceeded out of the mouth of Stephen. So it testified that the very life of Jesus was reproduced in that sinful human being. So he had the experience, he had the life, at the same time, he had to testify that. So the papacy crisis is allowed by God that the mystery he's going to fulfill in us as a human being is going to be exemplified, is going to be testify to the world, and God is going to use that to, to, to do the executive judgment. So my sister, I, I don't disagree with you at all. No, I agree with you 100%. Okay? I 100% agree with you. I'm just saying, plus the experience, we have a duty to put a truth clear before people. I am saying this doesn't mean that I completely change it. I can tell you the truth. My whole entire life, I am Adventist for 21 years now. I never felt a need of Christ as now. Before Amen. I would pray and fast seven days, I would pray and fast 21 days. God did any kind of miracle for me. 
cast out demons or anything. But now when I compare my car with Christ, I feel like I need to be, I need to be born again every day. Like I am sometimes ashamed of myself. Mm -hmm. Only now it happened like that. I can say a couple of years now. But now it gets much intense because anytime I say, Lord, I have to be like you. Oh no, I can see how much I need you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it will break you no matter who you are. No matter how much experience you have with God, the instant you want to be like Jesus, you're going to see how... that It's like you just look at yourself in the mirror, and the mirror shows you, okay, you have some dirt here, there, 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 go to Jesus for cleanse again. That's why in these days, he, we want to be like him. Guess what? He knew it's going to be hard, so himself take that, take that on charge. He said, you know what? I'm going to take care of this myself. If you fall, I pick you up, I clean you, and we continue. I put the angel to protect you. Put the Holy Spirit to guide you, to convince you and convict you of your sin. We're going to do this thing together because you can't do it yourself. Amen. So you have God to put everything that Sister, Sister Andrew, the Holy Angel are there to protect. The Holy Spirit guides you. If you do something wrong right now, only the Holy Spirit convicts you of your sin. At the Amen. end, you say, Lord, I, I do wrong again. So I say, don't worry about it. I'm taking care of that. Your car, get more spirit. Submit, submit, submit. I give you more spirit right now. Let's go. So that's how we move. I know. Oh. That is the reason why when the Christian is locked in this, you know, no matter what, you cannot lose this battle. It gives us the assurance of salvation. <laughs> that's awesome. Every time you are suffering, you know it's worth it. You see, when Stephen was receiving all of this stone, he said it is worth it to have the eyes focused on the Father and the Son. Because he you knows this is my... You see, can we take the Praise picture Lord. a little bit? That you are a human being, a little human being on earth. You're going through a little stoning scenario, facing the trouble, and the God of the universe show up. His Son also show up. That is how much God will assist every human being who decides to stand for his name, who decides to reveal his character. God is 100% involved. So, my sister, I don't disagree with you. I am just saying. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it is something that it, 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 I, 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 I don't know. Maybe but because I, I am try, I, I don't know. I can tell you. I wish I can have better word. If we are fixing this in the French, maybe I can explain much better. But I think you get my point, and I do understand you. We are saying the same thing. Maybe I'm just making some little emphasis on the, some point of the experience and our duty also. When we receive this Holy Spirit, we're going to share with other people. We're going to share the truth That's with other right. people. Amen. You know? Oh, no, the same desire of Eddie. He said, he... Page 301, paragraph 3. He who under abuse or cruelty fails to maintain a calm and trustful spirit, rob God from his wife to reveal the perfection of his own character in me. When I heard that, I was like, I'm, 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 I, as a pastor, sometimes my voice comes off, off. I say, Lord, so I just rob you. The time you should reveal your, your loving spirit, your patience, your long suffering. At that moment, boom, I come out of it. Believe me, I don't feel like pastor anymore. All I know, I, I feel as a helpless, sinful man who needs God. Like when any Christian needs this level every day, no, that's why people can say anything. You know, Lord, you're going to solve me out of this thing. When you get this point, you don't have nobody to go to get, nothing's going to happen. So we are really saying the same thing, so I don't want to be repeating myself, but by God's grace, we're getting there. So my suggestion is, in this 1888 message, let us read the point where we start learning the details of the life of Jesus. Today, I was meditating on one thing. I said, the whole Bible, I never saw Christ one time require anybody to apologize to him. 
I, I, I thought about a whole day from my time of devotion. Like, wait a minute. People insult this man. He don't say anything. They say he's possessed by visible. He don't. Uh, they, they say you are you you are born of fornication. Like he didn't say anything to him. He just come. He heal you. Do good things to you. He never asked anybody to acknowledge what they do wrong. To apologize to him. And I'm like, where do we get an idea from that people need to come apologize to us? But it is true because for the teaching of self-deny, we must practice that and grow. I want people to understand me very, very well. I don't say brother and sister should not acknowledge their wrongdoing and fix it. Mm -hmm. I don't say that. But I'm saying that Christians should not be expecting to yeah. receive apology. Apology, yes, right. Because look at Christ. God never wait for us to come to beg for forgiveness. He came for us. He forgives you. Now the knowledge of the forgiveness, it makes you so humble that you say, Lord, I give up. I surrender. I repent. Praise if the Lord. I fix my mind, if I fix my mind right now that whatever you do to me is forgiven, I cannot be hurt. That's why it says the righteous, Psalm 119, 165, the righteous cannot be offended. I say, Lord, I'm not righteous. I need help right here because I'm offended by everything right now. So it brings me to the point where every minute I say, Lord, I need you. I need help. I need help. I, and that's how you start getting into walking the spirit that you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You are going to feel the, the failure in the beginning. You're going to be falling and getting up. Falling and getting up. But don't be discouraged. The person who died for everything Amen. is gone. You see, we think we want eternal life so bad. We don't. God wants us there. He invests right. his very life. Christ invests his very life in this thing we are talking about. He's very life. Okay. He can't give up on it. Amen. So my sister, oh, and my brother, you might be struggling with your character, or you're not getting it yet. If sometimes you feel like giving up, don't give up. Someone is on Amen. track. He his very oh, life into it. He put his very life into it. He cannot let it fail. Mm -hmm. That's right. No matter what. Praise you, the Father. No matter Praise how the time, time. You, you oh, try to be patient. You keep falling. So good. Don't, don't be focused on your failure. Focus on where power is coming from. Focus on, for, on the helper. Because he cannot let us know. It's not possible. God must win. He can win without us. He must win with us for us. So I'm going to stop well, here for anyone who wants to speak. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yes, we totally understand, totally get what you're saying, totally understand, you know. It's just mm -hmm. not now. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's for us now to leave mm -hmm. with this message and to, and to put it in our daily lives mm -hmm. and to know that with the struggling that we are going to struggle with, God has made a way. So mm -hmm. we don't have to, we don't have to, do it by ourselves because we cannot, but it is through God that he will do it through us, Christ in us. He will do it through us. So we, we don't have to focus on our, on, on our failures, Amen. as you said. Um, focus on our, focus on God because we don't have any strength. Amen. So focus Amen. on God. Uh, mm -hmm. Ministry of Healing, Chapter 43, um, mm -hmm. pretty much, pretty much, confirms what you just said. So Ministry of Healing, Chapter 43, does a very good job on what you just said. So if I, if somebody asks you, that all I have about 1888, put it for me in a simple, couple of sentences, what will you say? It is Christ in you. It is it is the message, the message, the 1888 message is the mm -hmm. message where you, we, we, we cannot, our strength in, in, do, in overcoming sin, overcoming mm -hmm. sin in our strength, we cannot. 
for overcoming sin in Christ's strength, looking to God, who is the author and finisher of our faith, we can. So we can be successful in overcoming sin through Christ, but not in us. So we should not, as you said, focus on our failures, but focus on Christ Jesus. Okay, you are very right. Mm-hmm. You are very good. If you don't mind, I can, I can put in a simpler test for you. I can, like, I can put in a simpler way. What you say is 100% right. The easiest way is using the mind. Right. That's a very easy way to see doctrine. Christ is the mind of Christ. Amen. Now, in Romans 8, verse 6 and 7, it says, The carnal mind is enmity. Against God. Against God. Mm-hmm. And God can do nothing about it. Mm-mm. God cannot help it. God, nothing can be done. It has to be done away. Right. So we need it's a new right mind. Right. So we need a new mind. What is the mind? Mm-hmm. Let this okay. mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now, what Amen. is the mind? What is the mind? The, mind. the, functioning, is the functioning of the brain. Good. Let me give you an example. For the letter I remember, until this day, I never talked back to my dad. It just never happened. Why? In my mind, I know there's no way I can talk back to my dad. It's like that in my mind. But my mom, we mingle too much. We always uh, bounce. Sometimes it happens. When it happens, she says, okay, I'm going to let your dad know. And I know I should not continue. I need to stop. When I come to America, I can see these teenager children, they say anything back to their dad. I was shocked. Like, I'm trying to understand how it happened. I can't get it. <laughs> it's a mind. I mean, the mind you have, that's how you are going to function. That's right. You see, Christ have the power to do anything. He has the power to turn the bread, the, the stone into bread. He has that power. And then he's very hungry. So he needed. He needed, but he, and, and he also has the power. But guess what? He makes up his mind, I won't do anything by myself. Then he cannot move. Mm-hmm. So I can insult anybody, right? You can insult anyone who offends you. Mm-hmm. But at that moment, you know that, oh, Lord, I should not do what I want. So I need to commit myself to you. When you commit yourself to God, God says, okay, instead of insulting, I want you to pray for that man because he needs help. Because Satan can get into him and use him so that you're going to mm-hmm. end up praying for your enemy, something you don't used to do. So the renewing of the mind is what we need. Accepting. We, I can tell you our Adventists. I remember one day my mom asked me, oh, did Christian also get so angry? I said, yes, because Christ himself get angry and he break everything in the temple. Mm-hmm. Later on, I find out in the desired ages, that was not true. But how many Christians believe that Christ get mad in the temple and upside down everything? Almost 99%. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even in Adventist, even Adventist pastors. So before you believe that, guess what? When somebody do something to you, Okay, we go for it. So, when we look at Christ now, he is the king, and then he made himself of no reputation. I said, oh, Lord, how much I fight for reputation by his name? So, the mind is going to bring you to the point where you're going to feel the need. So, because Christ, someone is sending me the quotation today, because Christ took our human nature to live the life of God, he need the help of God. I'm going to repeat that again. Because Christ took our human sinful nature and sinful nature at the level of the flesh. And in that nature, he has to live the life of God. So that requires from him to fully depend on the Father. Same thing for us today. We are sinful. If we want to live the life of God, the life of Jesus, there's no way around we need help. Then we need to be praying. We need to be committing ourselves to him every minute. 
But the answer we don't feel that need, then we can defend ourselves. So the mind is number one thing. Until the mind is renewed, we cannot feel the need of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We might see the need of God to bless us, to give us more money, to give, pay the bill, do everything, but not the help to face situation where you don't need to retaliate. Oh, time is over. So we're going to stop here for tonight. We might have another time next um, next um, Friday. So I definitely encourage everyone, ask God for deeper understanding. That's all I can say. Because I'm reading 1888 since 2011. And I still, I still having, I still receiving more understanding about the same thing. I think more and more and more. So I encourage everyone, keep digging, keep praying, and read the Beatitude, read the detail of the life of Jesus. The Spirit is going to give you deep things. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for tonight. And we can, mm -hmm. I can continue next Friday. Mm -hmm. Can I make a comment? Sure. Um, Sorry for being too long. I have been too long. No, I love no, no. <laughs> okay. Hey, Pastor, you know when you were talking about how Hus and Jerome, they were burned, and then how Stephen was stoned? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that we have to go through that, be the same way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was some pretty good stuff there, you know, to understand that. And I'm asking, give us a pause for a few seconds so um, I could comment on it because there's a lot of amens I like to say <laughs> because the Holy Spirit really um, convicted me of some really good truth tonight. It was good. Thank you. I appreciate it. The whole, the, whole evening has been, the whole evening has been very good. Everybody's uh, – I can see the Lord is leading everybody in the group. And so it's like, it was a fun and exciting night. It was very much a blessing. Yeah. You see what Amen. Sister Stephanie said? That we need the truth and the work. Both. You know? All right. Amen. So somebody <laughs> next. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Uh -huh. Hi, everybody. Hello, good night. Is everyone hearing me? <laughs> Hello, yes, yes. yes. Hey. Amen, yeah, brother. Um, <laughs> I'm on the line, but um, I keep chipping out and um, I have to keep dialing back. I don't know what's happening, but I, I've, I've been listening for a good while now. But this is mm -hmm. this is a, this is a statement that I want to share based on what has been discussed from Christ Object, Object Lesson, Christ Object Lesson, page 419, 419, paragraph two. It says, "It is a." privilege of every soul to be a living channel through which God can communicate to the world the treasures of His grace. The unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that Christ desires so much as agents who will represent to the world His, his spirit and character. There is nothing mm -hmm. that we, the world needs so much as 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 as, as, as Sister White says in, in the, this, this precious message. She says, represent to this world is spirit and character. There's nothing that the world needs so much as the manifestation to humanity of the Savior's love. She says, mm -hmm. listen, to God, listen to this final Amen. Uh, listen to this final mm -hmm. sentence. She says, all heaven is waiting for channels to which can be poured the only oil to be joy and blessing to human art. Amen. Amen. You hear that one? Amen. So God is waiting on <laughs> uh -oh. God created. He made everything for man before man was created. So God mm -hmm. always has everything provided for us, but he's waiting on us to accept his life. His life is his, his way of, of, of doing things the way. It, it's, it's not 
as Sister Angie said, it's impossible for us to do it on our own. When Isaiah, when Isaiah saw himself, in Isaiah, when he saw himself, he recognized how filthy he is. He said, woe is me. I am undone. Mm-hmm. So we have to see how much we are in need of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have to see how much we need of Christ. That's why Christ said in, in Psalms 40 verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O God. Thy law is within my heart. That is what Christ wants. The mm-hmm. law to bring in our hearts. Mm-hmm. The, Jew, the Jewish nation, they had the law all over. Everywhere the law was put up. But the law, they, they had the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Mm-hmm. That, is a, that is the same problem happening to us in these last days. We have the, we have the letter of the law, we only uphold one of the commandments by exhorting that. Amen. For the spirit of love, which is the law. The law is all about love. Amen. So how, do we, how do we relate to others when we see them not uh, as, mm. as, 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 as how we are? We look down mm. on them, we criticize them, but yes, we go to church and, and, we, and we sit down and relax. That's not the spirit of Christ. As Pastor outlined to us, the spirit of Christ, Christ never tried to be in conflict with anybody. Mm. Even when they wrong him. Even when he, they, they wrong him, he never tried. Always have the spirit of love. As we see the, 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 the history of the, 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 the disciples, when the people didn't welcome Christ in Luke, they, they, they didn't welcome Christ. And what they said, call them fire and destroy them. That they didn't, they didn't have that experience that Christ was trying to bring them at that time. But soon as they get that experience on the day of Pentecost, they have a different mindset, and that is the mindset that God wants us to have. Mm-hmm. And 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 it it is it is your prerogative to find how you should get that mindset. It is our personal prerogative to go and to seek and to find. Yes. Yeah. The, you coming to church every yes. time and listening to pastor will not give that to you. You will know the Amen. message intellectually, but you will not have it. You will Amen. still come. You will still hate each other. You will still be selfish because I see, I see all of us, we are so selfish. We are selfish to the point where it, it bothers me. It bothers hmm. me. Why? Because we have not truly found Christ. We know it intellectually, but we do not know it personally. We need it personally. We are too selfish. We we will think we claim that we love, but we do not love. Cause hmm. that self that that selfishness has to go, and we need to give up ourselves immensely. Definitely. We don't do that. We don't do that. We keep on we keep on making excuses. Every time we are supposed to be selfless, we make an excuse. Yes, mm-hmm. we cannot do it in our strength. We need God to help us, but we need to make an effort. Amen. Amen. Definitely agree with that one. That's why that's why the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter one, verse twenty one, said for me to live. That's when Paul fully understands this life that Christ was trying to show him. Yet for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So that is the conclusion when it comes to accept the life of Christ. The we life must of die we must die to self daily. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So daily walk is not today. We'll it's make- a daily walk. Yeah. So don't don't wait until Sabbath and when Pastor comes he's gonna preach and we're gonna feel it. No, let's do it daily. That is the world gospel now. That's the gospel of the world today, waiting for a sermon, you know? That is the gospel that we do. We practice it too. That's not of the world. Mm-hmm. That's of the church. We practice it mm-hmm. too. We sit down and wait for pastor to preach and say, okay, yes, we we felt it. But we're not practicing how to be selfless. Amen. 
Can we're I give not a finding here? God for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> can I can I give a quotation here? Yes, yeah. Brother Randy, go ahead. Um, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 8, page 289. Let me say again, Testimonies to the Church, page 289.2. says that, says that the knowledge of God as revealed in Christ is the knowledge that all who are saved must have. Amen. It, it is the knowledge that works transformation of character. You see, mm. this, mm-hmm. knowledge, this knowledge received will recreate the soul in the image of God. Oh, it will, Im- it, it will mm. impart to the whole being a spiritual mm-hmm. power that is divine. You see that? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that knowledge or that truth has to be received and then it should work transformation of character. So, so if that knowledge is being revealed or it, it, it is being heard of but is not causing um, transformation of character in the, mm-hmm. in the life of the individual, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that individual is wasting a lot of time. The, amen. Mm. Amen. So, amen. Yep. Amen yep. again. Yep. That so, individual yep. is wasting a lot of time. So you come into church and listening to sermons of the sermons of the sermons of the sermons of the sermons. Nothing is happening. Time for you Why? to go down on your knee personally and search for God. That is mm-hmm. my thing. Go down on your knee personally and search for God each and every day. Find out why you cannot find God. Why you cannot love. <laughs> find out what's happening, what is preventing, what, what demon is there that is blocking you from that. Now, now, now I, I had made a statement a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Concerning why is it that we behave with the same things at church, coming every Saturday and we're hating and we have all this, you know, stuff that's going on. And I was asked, how do I know that? And the same thing came up tonight again, as it's Andrina Sue. Why is it that we are so selfish? There is a lot of selfishness that goes on in the church. Too much. Why is it that we are unloving, unkind? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't have to, to. We just know that it's there. Matter of fact, you you know yourself, and mm-hmm. and as as. People say, you know, it takes one to know one. So if if you know it, it means that if you can actually see it, it means that you've experienced it. That's why you can actually see it or exactly. feel it. Mm-hmm. You know, I know when I'm selfish. I know when I'm unloving. I know when I'm unkind. That's right. And so if, and so if I go in an environment that have it, I can pick it up. I can feel it. Exactly. So, you know, you can tell that the person, you can't tell if the person is is trying to overcome it or not, but you can feel by by your work, you shall know them. And you can see things by the fruits, people, the fruits of what, how you behave, your, your, Mm -hmm. your demeanor, and even Mm -hmm. some of the, some of the language that we don't like to show, the body language. The it eyes, shows. It comes out. No matter it comes how, out. No matter how you try to hide it, when you have selfishness and hate in you, sometimes you don't even know that you have it in you. But it shows so well in your body language that it, it can't hide. Your eyes is, is, is like the major one <laughs> yep. to give you away. Yep. So sometimes we need to be honest with each other as brethren and sister. And if I have a problem, 
sister and, and like come to sister Andrea. She won't be afraid like she's gonna go tell the whole world. But we should be able to come and say, you know what? I have this issue, you know, some something about you I can't stand or or something that you're doing is affecting me. Mm-hmm. And we're supposed to be able to work it out. She shouldn't feel any way. I shouldn't feel any way to go to her. These are the things that we need to come to if we really are going right. to get over this hump. We, we always try right. to brush it under the rug. Like, how do you know mm-hmm. that the person is, is selfish? You can't know. No, I can know. If the person That's really right. wants to be honest, they would agree to they would actually say, yeah, I yeah. am, you know, I am unloving. I am unkind. What can you do to help me? You know? But sometimes we want to just keep brushing these things under the rug, you know, and it's not going to help anybody if you keep it there. Somebody might be able to help you with some experience that they had that they can share with you. So this is this is the the point that we're at right now where we need to confess our sins one to another. You know, and our faults, our faults, um, our faults to one another, and yeah. it causes us to rise up and crying, and you know, but we need to put away this, you know, trying to help each other, and then when I'm gone, my my back is turned. You 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 take you know the thing to somebody else. You know, we need to yeah. come away and really come up higher to another level that God Amen. is expecting Amen. to be at. Can, can I say something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I agree with you. And it's like the only way, because um, someone once told me hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, that's all, yeah. And it's like, yeah, and that's all. When I, mean, I heard that, I'm like, oh, that's the story of my life. And it's Amen. like both, both ways. <laughs> you know, I was Amen. like, what a shocker that was. But it really is <laughs> helpful to know that truth, that simple truth. And the only way we can go is like with the right arm and have Jesus fill us with his love because those people mm-hmm. just haven't been able to comprehend some of the, excuse me, all of the things I heard in this room tonight. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's pretty, it's a deeper understanding of God. And so if we can go and love them, it's just like Pastor said earlier, when they are talking bad about Christ and doing all the things, they crucified him, whipped him, and he's all like, forgive him, Father. And, and mm-hmm. that love can come into us, and anything they do to us, they won't bother us. But we'll be able to show yeah. the love, and they'll and you'll, and you'll rescue a few out of the church, you know, because there's still right. people in there. Right. I mean, they got to get up and still go to church on Sabbath. That's not like really easy to do all the time, you know. Okay. So, um, I, <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, brother Randy, brother Randy is yeah. here. Yes, sir. Can you read for us Ministry of Healing, page 492, paragraph 1, because we need to make something very clear here. That's right. More, more. Wow. Ministry of Healing, 492, paragraph 1. Yeah, paragraph 1 and 2. Just read it. Ministry of Healing. 492, paragraph 1. Paragraph 1 says, cultivate, cultivate the habit of speaking well of others. That one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cultivate the habit of speaking well of others. Dwell upon the good qualities of those with whom you associate. And see mm-hmm. as little as possible of their errors and failings. Amen. When tempted, to, com- when tempted, when tempted to complain at what someone has said or done, Praise something in that person's life or character. Amen. Cultivate thankfulness. Praise God for his wonderful love in giving Christ to die for us. It never pays to think of our grievances. God calls upon us to think of his mercy and his matchless love that we may be inspired with praise. Amen. Pastor, 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 pastor. 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 I'm going to stop you right there. Pastor, hang on, hang on. We are not talking about people. We are talking about the fact that we are learning every Sabbath. And I'm saying, this is what I'm saying, because you brought that up, but when you brought that up, you make it sound like we're talking people. I'm not talking anybody. I'm saying it is time. I am saying it is time for us to move from ground zero 
and start to go higher. It's time for us to move higher. We are too selfish. And I, 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 I am not talking anybody. I can be talking about myself, but I'm personally saying we are too selfish, and I'm not going to take it back. We are too selfish. We are too selfish. Too many times I see brethren in the church, and if somebody says, drop me here, drop me there, you're, they're not willing. They're doing it, but not with a willing heart. We are too selfish. And, and uh, we, you, could, you can read this from now till next year. At the end of the day, we are still selfish. We are still yeah. selfish, and we need to get over it, and we need to try to get over it. So reading this is not going to say, okay, oh, wow, oh, my goodness, this is what Ellen G. White said, let me not talk about people. It's not talking about people. This is, this, is, this, is a, this is a sin problem, and we need to call sin by its right name. We are too selfish at the end of the day. So are you going to read this and say, okay, well, um, let's not talk about people. At the end of the day, we are too selfish. We are too selfish, and we have to get over it. We have to pray about it, and we need to get out whatever we need to do to get over it, to get over the Amen. selfishness and move on Amen. so we, so we can get, we can receive the Holy Spirit. That is where we need to reach, too. Amen. Do you know how the Bible has called this when you don't hear from it? other person. But well, you did not even hear what I have to say first. It does not say that we should not rebuke ourselves. It doesn't say that. It's talking about dwelling upon. The Holy Spirit rebuke us of our sin. But it does not dwell upon it. Read the next paragraph. Maybe it will explain what I was trying to say. I agree with all you guys saying. 100%. But I don't know why you didn't even hear yet and you ran so fast. I don't think we are good. Even myself, I was saying, even the previous talk, how much every day I can see that, wait a minute, I'm coming short. I didn't say we are good. So how everybody boiled up like if I was saying that we should just cover sin. I don't mean anything like that. But how come? Read the next paragraph. Maybe that will explain the thing for us. <laughs> okay, let me read here. It says, um, earnest workers have no time for dwelling upon the faults of others. It's a we cannot afford, we cannot it says, afford. It says dwell. You see, there's a word here we need to understand. We have to acknowledge what we do wrong, but not to dwell upon it. It will destroy you. Either your own fault or somebody's fault is going to change you because by beholding, you are going to change. You acknowledge the wrong. If you need to rebuke, you rebuke it. The next thing, start praying about it. Start praying for it. Continue. Continue, Brother Randy. All right. It says here, we cannot afford to live on the husk of others' faults or failings. Evil speaking is a twofold curse, fa- falling more heavily upon the speaker than upon the hearer. He who scatters the seeds of dissension and strives and strife reaps in his own soul the deadly fruits. The very act of looking for evil in others develops evil in those who look. By dwelling upon the faults of others, we are changed into the same image. But by beholding Jesus, talking of his love and perfection of character, we become changed into his image. By contemplating the lofty ideal he has placed before us, we shall be uplifted in a pure and holy atmosphere. Even the presence of God, when we abide here, 
there goes forth from us a light that irradiates all who are connected with us. Okay. I suggest, in my very humble opinion, the time we spend on our problem, we spend much time to pray, to wrestle, to counsel each other, to encourage, even fast for our character. We can denounce the evil from day to night. Christ's work right now is a work of reconciliation. If you have hundred minutes to deal with sin, spend one to five to explain the sin, and then spend ninety-five to hang on Jesus to deliver you. It is what I am trying to say. I don't say we should not rebuke each other. I don't say we should not point out what is wrong. I don't say we should not acknowledge that we are all wrong. I am saying not to dwell upon it. Why? It is the very act of looking for evil in order develop evil in those who look. Amen. Christ convinces okay. us and convicts us of our sin, and then next thing he does, he cleans us from the sin. When we see somebody have a bad character, do we ever, anybody on this line can testify right now, that you spend the time to pray and fast, especially for a brother. Mm-hmm. Pray and fast for somebody's sin. You know he have that sin in his life over and over and over. He says, today, Lord, this day I'm going to consecrate this day to pray and fast for my brother because he's proud. That is exactly what Christ is doing right now. Christ don't spend his time on our sin. He spends his time in fixing us. That's why he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. So I encourage all of us, the same way we are aware of our weaknesses, let's get into prayer for each other. Let's get the seed of prayer and fasting for each other. So we're going to grow strong. But if we dwell, we are going to be in trouble. But we should rebuke each other. We should rebuke each other. We should acknowledge our sins. We should repent. And we should confess to each other if we do wrong to each other. They spend the most of the time in repairing, in intercession for each other, in praying. That is the key. Hello? Hello? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, as we're talking about, um, oh, we need to, to have this Christ like, um, appearance. As you said, Rightly so, Pastor. You have to look, um, pray for others, um, because we have to be our brother's keeper. And selfishness, we are naturally, we born, uh, we born that way. But when we, we, we receive Christ, that, 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 that nature is supposed to be changed. And, um, in Ministry of Healing, look, write down this one, Ministry of Healing, page 157, paragraph 5 says, naturally we are self-centered and opinionated. But when we learn the lessons that Christ desires to teach us, we become partaker of his nature. Hence what we live is life, not our life, is life. A wonderful example of Christ, the matchless tenderness which he enters into the feelings of us. He weeping with those who he the character of all who follow him in sincerity. By kindly words and acts, they will try to make the path easy for we receive. So that is what we are called to do. That is that is, that is what we are called. Naturally, we are, but we have to change. That 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 we have to look at Christ. Behold, the Bible said, "Behold, the Lamb of God that take away the sins of us." We have to behold Christ, not ourselves or others. After the old person, movie, behold Christ. 
the more we see how we can encourage and pray for others. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, I was away. So he says, we rejoice with others, we weep with them, and influence upon the character of all who follow in him in charity. By kindly words and acts, they will try to make the path easy for we repeat. We're in, a, we're in a world right now where it's loaded with a crisis where people are suffering everywhere. And, 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 and we can make it easier for others by praying for them, encouraging them. Their, their interest is, is our interest, meaning that we, we, we are there for them, we are trying to encourage them. But it's also, everything has to um, have an approach, or we approach others can, can, can run them from us or draw them closer to us. So Christ was a friend of everybody because his appearance was always loving. So that is also can deter people from us, or we... We, 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 or we look, or deportment, or we, or we, or we act, you know, so that is very important, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... We will um, come to a close, and we only got to page 23 and 24, which is um, the first two pages. Um, But uh, in page 26, it says, Three brief years before the 1888 message began to sound, Mr. White said that when the latter rain and the loud cry should at last begin, the work will spread like fire in the stubble. Later, later, she said, the final movements will be rapid ones. But people on planet Earth are being born faster than, than we know how to reach them with the message we have. Each passing year leaves us with a bigger witnessing task. We may think we are making great progress on schedule, but most candid Seventh-day Adventists confess a sober conviction that the world is simply not yet lighted by the glory of that other angel's loud cry message. And if we baptize billions of people and all settle down to be as lukewarm as we are, that would not hasten the coming of the Lord. So... We have to look at our own lives. The Holy Spirit is available. What are we doing with the power that's there waiting? It says each passing year leaves us with a bigger witnessing task because people on planet Earth are being born faster than we know how to reach them with the message we have. And then it says, yes. what, can solve, what can solve the impasse? Four years after the 1892 statement, Ellen White frankly pinpointed what happened. A tragic development forced an era of bright hope to draw to a close. An unwillingness to yield up preconceived opinions and to accept this truth the law in Galatians is especially the moral law lay at the foundation of a large share of the opposition manifested in Minneapolis, 1888, against the Lord's message through Brethren E.J. Wagner and A.T. Jones. By exciting that opposition, Satan succeeded in shutting away from our people, in a great measure, the special power of the Holy Spirit that God longed to impart to them. The enemy prevented them from obtaining that efficiency which might have been theirs in carrying the truth to the world. 
as the apostle proclaimed it after the day of Pentecost. The light that is to lighten the whole earth with its glory was resisted, and by the action of our own brethren has been in a great degree kept away from the world. So, are we delaying the coming of Christ by our own actions? That's what we need. Is it our pride, our selfishness? All of the above. Our, our self-dependence. Mm-hmm. Our our lack of living the what we preach. Our lack of really studying the life of Christ to know how He wants us to live it. What is it that you are? All of the above. Yeah, all the above. All the above. Absolutely. Well, I must say that we can see that timing doesn't matter or God, God, God is never late. But I can say that surely no man knows the day or the hour. So, if I, I die now or tomorrow, you know, would my lack... Are you dead in Christ? Would my lack of uh, what's the word I want to use? Because we're we're sometimes thinking that, you know, God is working with me, you know, and I'm getting there. But uh, no one knows the day or the hour. And as Sister Andrea said, we really need to get down and really, you know, get to the point where we ask God to help us to not just pray and get up and do something different, but mm-hmm. to pray and put away our pride because a lot of times I feel like because of pride we are definitely going to lose eternal life Um, and it's truly not going to be worth it. As Mark 10, 15 says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter the room. So, I I would like to ask one of us to ask God to show us all of our sins, the known, the unknown, the cherished, the ones we we feel like we okay with the inherited, the cultivated, uh, those we want to cover, those we feel proud about, that we, mm-hmm. we you know, don't wish to change, and mm-hmm. we flaunt it. Um, I just pray that we all would come only before the throne and tell God the truth about our reality. And beg him to allow us to submit. And he can't force us. So whatever we have to do, I can't say how you have to do it, but I pray that this study tonight will help us that we can submit, that we can start reaching the billions of people that are being born every day that we cannot reach if we still just dragging our feet you know, and just moving at our own pace, I really believe we all can really make a decision and seriously work with the Holy Spirit to Amen. change all of our selfish attitudes, anything that's possible. Not work with the Holy Spirit, but allow the Holy Spirit to work yeah. in us and to use allow us. 
Amen. 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 So that's that's what we wish for tonight. Um for a lot more change being seen and not just preached every week. But we need to put away the pride. It's if it, we we know that we we are not gonna feel good when somebody, you know, says something to us and we have to just look dumb and stupid. But let's put away the pride that we can reach these babies that are being born every day and we don't have time to reach these people. Amen. And then I would I would like to just because sometimes when you, when you hear it, it's like it makes sense. The final people on planet Earth are being born faster than we know how to reach mm-hmm. them with the message we have. So we that would be that fourth angel. <laughs> hmm? I said that would be that fourth angel is how to reach it, but we don't want to talk about that. It will be on another three hours. Yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> But that's how it's going to do it. It's going to it's going to go to the whole world. That's amazing. Of course, it's amazing. Just, that's what it was saying. It was saying when and why did LG White make this earth shaking announcement? It says the original source is a Review and Herald article of November twenty second, eighteen ninety two. The revelation of the righteousness of Christ refers to the message of eighteen eighty eight, which was then plodding four years along in its baffling course of history among us. After due reflection, this courageous lady was ready to say it boldly. The message which came since the Minneapolis conference was the beginning of the final outpouring of the Holy Spirit that would lead into the lightning, into lighting the earth with the glory of the fourth angel of Revelation 18. The seismic impact of that word is unprecedented for never before or after did she say that that about any other message she's heard. So the 1888 message is a very important message. Uh, It's the beginning of the final pouring of the Holy Spirit and that would lead into the lighting, lighting the earth with the glory of the fourth angel of Revelation 18. Now, we all know the fourth angel is all about character, having the character of Jesus Christ. Okay, we have one minute to wrap up. Yes, so (laughs) we leave leave it right there on having the character of Jesus Christ. So thank you, everyone, and please, let's reach these babies that are being born. Amen. If that is your only motivation, reach the babies that are being born, that we don't have enough people to reach them. Let's forget self and put away all that is unlike Christ, that we can reach these people that are being born, and it's not enough of us to reach them. Thanks again. Uh, let's pray.